Hi, welcome to my video on mitosis. Um, I'm going to start off by just quickly outlining the stages of the cell cycle. So we start with the main phase, which is interphase. And that can be broken down into three stages. So we've got G1, which stands for growth one. We have S phase, which stands for synthesis. And then we have G2. Um, so G1, main G2 are quite similar in the fact that we're going to get protein synthesis, new organelles being formed, um, those sorts of things kind of getting the cell ready really for dividing um, and in the S phase is really important because it links to a topic in F212 but that's where we get DNA replication. Okay after those that's when we actually go into mitosis. Okay so you can remember mitosis um, in different ways. Some people remember um, IPMAT, so the I for interphase and the P for prophase, then uh, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Um, or oh, one teacher, one colleague once told me that you could remember it by IP on a mat. So whichever suits you really, IP mat or IP on a mat, whichever. Okay, and then finally, um, if you go through interphase and then through mitosis, so interphase is getting the cell ready and um, you know for, and doubling the DNA. Then in mitosis, we've got you know the 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 splitting of the nucleus or nuclear division. So mitosis is nuclear division. A lot of people get that confused and think that mitosis is actually cellular division when actually it's nuclear division. And then to, to actually divide the cell, we have cytokinesis. And then that provides two identical cells. And because it's a cycle, we can go back to the beginning. So, so far then, we've looked at the fact that we start with interphase, and the most important part of interphase is really DNA replication, but we do also have a bit of, um, you know, organelles increasing, cytoplasm increasing, and more protein synthesis in G1 and G2. Um, but most importantly, S phase, the synthesis phase, we get more DNA. Then we move on to mitosis, which just to you know reconfirm is nuclear division, not cell division, um, where we actually produce two identical nuclei, we split the, the nucleus. And then finally we end up with a cell with two nuclei in it, and the cytoplasm splits um, by cytokinesis to form two new cells. So I thought it would be a good idea to kind of go back and look at each stage in detail. So we're going to start by drawing a cell, okay? That is the cell surface membrane or the plasma membrane. And inside, I'm gonna draw a nucleus. And that, of course, is the nuclear envelope. Okay, I've just drawn it as one line, but obviously it's a double nuclear envelope. But you can look more at the details of cell structure if you have a look at David Apiku's video. Okay, so we've got our cell then with our nucleus, and at the moment the cell is in interphase. Okay, now in interphase, sometimes interphase can be known as the resting stage, but actually that's quite misleading because there's quite a lot of things going on in interphase. Um, interestingly, a cell spends approximately 90% of the time in interphase. Um, so, the, as I said before, the most important thing really is the DNA replication. Now, when you talk to people about DNA, or if you talk to any of your, your friends, your family about DNA, most of the time they would expect to see DNA in the cell or in the nucleus, which looks like this. Which in fact, if you think about that 90% of the time the cell is in interphase, 
Very rarely do you see a nucleus with a chromosome, or do you see the cell with chromosomes like this. In fact, most of the time, you find it in long strands, I'm going to draw a nucleolus in there, long strands called chromatin. So to look at interface, I'm going to zoom in to the into the nucleus. So let me just draw a bigger nucleus. And then I'm just going to draw out a couple of the strands of chromatin to show you what's going to happen next. So let's imagine that we've got one long strand of chromatin. I appreciate that it's not going to look exactly like this, but at least this way is going to be quite clear for you to see. And then let's have a slightly smaller one here. And then let's have a really small one. Yeah, why not? Okay, so we've got sections now of chromatin in the, in the nucleus. Okay, so this is supposed to be the nuclear envelope around the outside. So the first thing we're going to do then is kind of, I'm just sort of, you know, breezing over G1 and G2 and really focusing on the S phase. So a um, bit of recap then from your F212. The cell is going to undergo semi-conservative replication. So if we took, let's take the little strand because it'd be easy to draw. If we took our little strand of DNA, what we would do then is first of all, we would have DNA helicase and it would split our DNA into single-stranded DNA. Um, I've completely split it apart just for the drawing sake, but of course, in reality, be section by section, it would be split apart. Okay, and then in come the three nucleotides. I was about to draw them in red, but I won't do that. Um, okay, and they um, complementary base pair to the original strand or the template strand. And then finally, in comes, in fact I will use another colour, in comes DNA polymerase to seal the backbone and we end up with two identical strands of DNA. Okay, so we've got two of that. And we would do the same, so let's put the two in here now. Okay, and we would do the same. Okay, so now everything's been doubled, we're ready to go into mitosis. Um, and the first stage of mitosis is prophase. So what happens in prophase then is for the first time we get to see um, chromosomes appear. And that's because this DNA, this chromatin, starts to condense and coil. So if I take, for example, let's take the big ones, this one here, this one here, and then just draw over here. So what happens is they start to condense. If I take this one strand to begin with, it starts to condense. And so it's much shorter and much fatter. So that is that one. And then the other side does the same. So it condenses and coils. Okay. So we end up with our typical shape called a chromosome. Okay, um, and then they're joined in the middle by something called a centromere. Oops, if you can see that. Um, and then each individual strand is now known as a chromatid. So that's a chromatid. And that one there is a chromatid as well. Okay, um, now as this one is identical to this one, we say that they are sister chromatids. Okay, but it's important to remember that this chromosome is made up of one, um, yeah, one strand of DNA, which is identical to the other strand of DNA. And that's really, really important. So if we go back to having a look, um, at, let's go back to our nucleus. Okay, so if that happens for all of them, what we should end up with is a big one, like so, and our big one here. 
and then a slightly smaller one here and then our little baby one down here okay um, so as I said before this before prophage you will not see chromosomes but during prophase, that's when the chromatids start to, or sorry, the chromatid starts to condense and coil, so wrapped around. In fact, it wraps itself around protein, really, really tightly coiled, in um, sometimes it's called super coiling, and we end up with what we now recognise as chromosomes. And the other thing that starts to happen is the nuclear envelope starts to break down. So we start to lose the nuclear envelope. And we're ready to move into the next stage and you might actually start to see during prophase the um, centrioles which I always draw like this again you can check out Mr Piku's video for cell structure will start to move to opposite poles okay now we're definitely definitely ready for um, metaphase Okay, so now we're ready for metaphase, and um, you will have noticed, well, obviously our chromosomes have disappeared, but I'm going to draw them in in a minute. But our nuclear envelope is now no longer um, present. But what you can see is that you've got the uh, centrioles at opposite poles. Now, one of the things that happens in metaphase, then, is our chromosomes line up on the equator. Okay? Um, just to, something I always try and point out to students is that it's really easy when you're looking at cell division and looking at mitosis to only think about it in terms of humans. So we would be looking at um, 46 chromosomes lying up on the equator. But, um, you know, different organisms have different number of chromosomes. So it's really important to remember that. OK, so I've got them now lining up on the equator which is a really, really, really sensible, sensible place for them to be because if you want to create a new cell with identical genetic information, then really, if you've got that side is identical to that side and that side and so on, this is a nice, sensible way of splitting that in half to ensure that both get identical copies. And the one thing that's really going to help that is these microtubules, these spindle fibres, which attach to the centromere. So the centrioles produce the spindle fibres um, which are attached to the uh, centromere of the chromosomes. Okay, um, and we are now ready to move on and have a look at the next stage which is anaphase. Okay, so here we are at the end of metaphase and we're about to have a look at anaphase. So I'm just going to move this over. Um, so during anaphase, I said to some students before that this stage I've called before banana phase because um, that's exactly what I think that the sister chromatids start to look like. So I've just drawn my centrioles on again and I'm going to draw some spindle fibres. Now what happens is the spindle fibres contract and shorten and as they shorten they pull the sister chromatids apart. So what you start to see is this forming like so. That's the big one, that's the medium sized one, and then that's the really, really, really small one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so sometimes they ask you um, what's the functions of the cytoskeleton or the microtubules, and one of them is pulling the sister chromatids apart during anaphase. Okay. Um, so now, these two have been split in half, okay, and they're making their way, we call this opposite pole, so they're making their way to opposite poles. And the final stage of uh, mitosis then is telophase. So at telophase, what we would find is that we now have all of the individual sister chromatids at the opposite poles. Okay, um, it gets a bit confusing here with the term chromos chromosomes because what we did was we pulled the sister chromatids apart, um, and we although they're, they're not, although they're in a single form, 
um, and we're still thinking of them as chromatids. When you put a nuclear envelope, which is what happens in telophase, once you put a nuclear envelope around your chromatids, we now think of them as chromosomes. So if you remember right, in fact, you might want to rewind, but if you remember, we started in prophase with three chromosomes and we've now ended up with two nuclei with three chromosomes in them. Now I know it's confusing because they don't look like the chromosomes we had at the beginning, but as soon as you put that nuclear envelope around the sister chromatids, we think of them as chromosomes. So we've ended up, if you think back to our original cell, this will all start to unwind. We've ended up with two identical nuclei, which at this moment in time still have one plasma membrane around them okay and we move into our final stage of cell division which is cytokinesis where the cytoplasm uh, splits sometimes you say it's cleaved okay and that creates two let's call that cytokinesis 